in and we win this game against the San Antonio Spurs. It was ugly as hell at times, but we made sure that we did what we needed to do uh, after a barrage of points uh, raining down by the San Antonio Spurs in that third quarter. The Knicks turned it around in the fourth. Three after three after three by RJ and, the, and then Alec Burks just went crazy. Just went crazy. There's nothing we could do or nothing they could do, excuse me. As the Knicks went 102-98. I was a little worried about our record. But the big three gets another dub. Ashley Moss, myself, and Mr. Alex, Vanilla CP. You know what it is. We did. We got our W. I was a little worried. I ain't going to lie to y'all. But uh, definitely turned that game around. Um, we saw we saw a bit of everything <laughs> in this game. Like We saw everything in this game. We saw in the uh, post game with CP. I don't know if you guys were watching that. Uh, live with CP getting mobbed by the, the Knicks family. Uh, but we heard somebody say that they felt like this wasn't a, a real win because we didn't blow out the Spurs. But look, man, for us to be down the way that we were and then turn it around the way we did in the fourth quarter, to me, that's a big, big, big plus for us going into the playoffs. But it was a very up and down game, 102-98. How are you guys feeling? Well, I'll tell you how I feel. I love that we won. <laughs> right. Spurs Seriously. usually give us a problem, you know, but it really started off as a, like, oh, it was a good game. We started off like neck and neck, right? As we always do. I feel like we, we the last couple of games on the road trip, we start off really slow, but back home, start, start off pretty well. We had, you know, Julius Randle. He wasn't hitting his shots necessarily in the beginning, but he was getting to the free throw line, just getting us points when we needed and then we had Alec Burks, who came out like he never missed a game, which was awesome. You know what I mean? I loved – the first half was really where it was at because you saw they were just neck and neck all the way. They kept it even. But then we had that third quarter of doom where you just felt like, oh, my God, are we really going to do this again? Are we really going to lose to the Spurs? And the Spurs always give us a tough time. But then you have Broadway Barrett yes. hitting some clutch threes yes. down the – down the stretch you have julius randall stepping up making big shots and then alec burks just says i'll put the team on my back and that's what essentially what happened with this game you know and i love everything about it especially seeing alec burks is just ready for playoff mode that's what we need going down the stretch mm -hmm. ashley listen i'm reporting live from the courts while you losers are in the rafters <laughs> yeah you can see um, we're all in the garden yeah yeah, yeah. but ashley got the better from this view of msg was absolutely fantastic <laughs> what a comeback it was sensational i know you guys couldn't see it from the nosebleeds but down here it was absolutely fantastic um <laughs> Um, yeah, listen, it was, this could have ended badly. And I think especially with Miami winning and the Hawks winning, this was something, this was a game that we needed to win. The Spurs came in hungry. They're trying to get into the play-in. So it wasn't a team that was going to go easy on you at all. Um, and, you know, it looked rough for a little bit. It looked a little, um, you know, up until the third quarter, it looked like it was, it was going, it was going in the wrong direction. But RJ Barrett's. My nine god, Badman Ting, Badman, Badman. <laughs> Listen. He will always turn it around. You don't need to get hard. You don't need to go hard on him because he goes harder on himself. And he has the eye of the tiger. He wants to be the leader of this team. He wants to be the leader of the New York Knicks. He wants to be the future of this franchise. And he proves it. Even in the games where he doesn't prove it, he turns it back around. And listen, A.B. Burks, man, absolutely great game from him. Let me look at his box score. I want to say it was 25 points. No, 30 points. I'm not even giving him full credit. That's right. Just came back with a vengeance. And you definitely needed that offensive help because... Um, you have Rose out, and and that's what you need. So I'm I'm excited. Did we lose audio? No, no, no. It was it was me. I went to the wrong screen for a second. You're good. You're oh, good. Okay. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So with like I said, with Derrick Rose being out for however long with his sw uh, twisted ankle or or sprained ankle, I think it is. Yeah, you definitely so need the additional offensive help, and Burks gives that to you. What a comeback win from these guys, Reggie. You pissed me off a little bit. <laughs> that was an unnecessary foul, Reggie. We got to oh, do no. better, but ultimately we pulled it out. And for everyone asking if I dyed my hair, yes, 
I'm a brunette now. I got rid of the blondes. <laughs> So I am part of the brunette gang. Everyone thinks I'm super Dominican now. So <laughs> that's something I'm going to be dealing with. But thank you guys for the compliments and for noticing. It got me courtside tickets, you as go. you can see. So it's been a great night. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, um, we're going we're gonna to need the uh, the mods to be on full alert tonight. Okay, the simp going to be on, on, on high alert tonight, 10 out of 10s, I'm sure. Leave my simp, leave my simp fan TV. Leave them alone. Oh, they mean well. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like like you said, you know Reggie had some rough uh, moments there, but I feel like he he closed out a lot better. Yeah, that foul was 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 rough. That man had five fouls for the game. But all around, like it felt like in the beginning we just couldn't find a bucket. Or Julius Randle was the only one, at least in that first quarter, that was able to get us any kind of points. But then he he went cold, um, and then decided to go in his uh point guard bag and and was out there dishing assists, getting rebounds, looking like he was going for a triple double tonight. He was almost there, one assist and one rebound away. Uh, R.J. Barrett was damn near uh useless in the first half for us and then completely turn it around doing what rj does you know being patient ha having that amnesia doing what he does well um but yeah uh i do want to mention we talked about alec burks and his return because there was two players that were uh out for us the last few games and that was him and emmanuel quickly now as alec burks came back as if nothing had happened we had the other side of the uh, hoop with Emmanuel quickly who went 0 for 4 tonight and was uh, he didn't really do too much tonight uh, one turnover a foul and that was about all she wrote for Emmanuel quickly to the point where uh, you can see that Tom Thibodeau didn't really go to him too much throughout the entire game and ran uh, the the starters plus Alec Burks from the midway through the third quarter all the way to the end of the game uh, not not gonna ask you guys if you works and I know the answer for all three of us here the answer is gonna be no but uh, just you know the rookie having the night that he had uh, you know, obviously, with Frank Nielkina, in my opinion, had him had himself another uh, solid night. He was one for one. His defense was good. You can see he was very situational tonight. Only played six minutes. But um, do you think that uh, this is something that is more of uh, a Derrick Rose? Not, I won't say problem, but a Derrick Rose situation because we, we see that he plays really well next to Derrick Rose. Or do you think it's just an injury and him just not having this win? What, what do you think it was for Emmanuel quickly tonight? I think it was Emmanuel quickly just coming back from injury personally. Yeah. I think it just takes him – it's going to take him a little time to get back into it. And thankfully, we're going to have a rest, you know, now that we clinched a playoff. By the way, we we should just talk about that, that we clinched a playoff. We're in the, we're in the top six, all right? We're in the top – we're in the top six. We get some – we get a break after the season is over before everything really starts getting into gear. So we're going to have – we're going to have enough time for Emmanuel quickly to get better – as we finish off these games. So he's going to get two more games to get back into rhythm, and he should probably get enough time during that time off to really get his legs under him that way because we're going to need him once this playoff comes. And maybe it was a little bit of Derrick Rose, but I really just think so, it's more so that coming back from injury and just being a little rusty. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that. It's just, you know, when you're coming off of injury, it takes you a couple games to get back into the swing of things. Luckily, he has not only, you know, the last two games of the regular season, but because the Knicks secured and clinched, baby, yes, sir. they have those Let's get they it. Have that five days of rest as well, around five days of rest where he can really just get into it and practice, get his repetitions in, get back into the swing of things and be ready to go come the playoffs. That's one of the reasons it was so important to clinch because you don't want that quick turnaround from the ending of the regular season to the play-in. Sometimes, you know, that that fatigue and that quick turnaround can be detrimental to your performance and ultimately affect what you're trying to do. When you secure and you clinch an actual playoff spot, mm -hmm. not only is it good for you because you get an actual series, right? You get more games to go ahead and compete, but your body also gets more rest and that's ultimately what you need, especially after such a grueling and intense season like the Knicks and all teams across the board with this condensed season, the quick turnaround from last season, the COVID, the pandemic, everything, the makeup games, all of that. You definitely want to go ahead and secure, even if it's a little bit of rest, you want to get that. And the Knicks did. So we here, baby. Yeah. 102 98 uh i do i kind of do want to talk about uh the, the the bad times of this game because we did get through it because that's one thing we always talk about with a lot of these games with these losses we had to denver and losses to phoenix and whatnot um we always talk about how we turn those l's into lessons and it felt like this was one of those games especially against such a well-coached team uh 
but like the Spurs with uh, Popovich on the other side, it, it, it seemed like the Knicks never, as we've been doing all year, but it seemed like we never uh, lost hope and never put our heads down, even though we had such a big uh, deficit uh, as we did uh, going into that game. And I just want to talk about that third quarter because third quarter, our defense just looked lost. You know what I mean? And um, obviously this is our first game back, our first game without Derrick Rose is quite some time and first game back for Alec Burks and Amanda Quick. So there's so many uh, different uh, things that you can point out to. But um, I just want to, we got to give props to the Knicks for that, man. That's huge. Like, to have that kind of, especially knowing how this team has played against the Spurs in the past, for us to weather the storm the way we did, like like we did tonight, you got to give the Knicks credit for that, man. That, that just shows the, the heart of this team. For sure. And they've been showing it throughout the majority of the season. It's not, like, this is not the first time that they come back from a deficit in the third quarter, yeah. right? I mean, we've seen, they're, they've been on and off being able, being able to, pull off such a feat but they've been able to do it more so than not which is why they're the position they are in right now being in the top six going into the playoffs not having to go through the plan but it just shows the the well like the well coached nature and just being prepared that tom thibodeau helps brings his team right yeah. and you see the the gritty nature of this team as well as ashley likes to say this is the new york grits they were not phased by anything whatsoever they didn't care that they saw uh, DeMar DeRozan on the other side, just doing what he normally does, which is put up <laughs> put up shots, the, attacking in the mid range. Mm-hmm. They said, "Look, we're going to stay calm, come out in the third quarter, just keep chipping away, and keep chipping away is what they did." Yeah. Pretty sure they got it down to four points before the end of the third quarter, right? Yeah, you know, and they just come out and they just continue to hit shots. You see, RJ doesn't. He had a bad first half, but he comes out saying, "Look, I'm going to relax, going to calm down." And just do what I do and just start hitting shots. And his confidence never wavers, which is what I love about RJ. And then Julius is just becoming clutch at the end, too. Just hitting clutch shots after clutch shots. Right, but right, we right, see right. that what was really important, you know, when we really missed out on the Lakers game is that Alec Burks is that different maker. You know, he went, what was it tonight? Pre- yeah, he went 5 for 10 from three-point range. From we, three. needed a, we needed a good three-point shooter, even though we had Reggie Bullock. We needed more three-point shooting, and Alec Burks definitely brings that, which is what we were sure we were missing against the Lakers the last game. And I don't think 100% that um, the Lakers game, I mean, obviously what you're saying is 100% factual. If you had Alex Burke, if you had Burks out there, um, it obviously would have made a huge difference. But I also think that Lakers game, and went into overtime, obviously, I think what the ultimate dagger was in that situation, just stupid mistakes down the stretch. I mean, you look at those two back-to-back possessions. You had the the Julius Randle travel, which was idiotic, and then the mm-hmm. RJ situation. I mean, yep. pass the rock or go to the rack. Two yep. options, RJ. It was those two mistakes that I think really secured that, that ultimately secured that outcome because I think that had those two things not happened, we were right there. I think that could have gone into double overtime. It was just, right. you know, stupidity and not in playing – Harder, not smarter. You know what I mean? In that situation. Mm-hmm. But absolutely, if Burks was out there, you probably wouldn't have even been in that situation to begin with because you would have had a diff- another offensive weapon that would have just helped you to secure a lead without exactly. even going into overtime. Or even if you did go into overtime, it wouldn't have come down to those final two possessions. Those wouldn't have made or break the outcome. So 100%. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's the thing, too. Like, it's just it just amazes me because every time we come against this team, I feel like. You know, I, I, I know the NBA, pre- I feel like I know the NBA pretty well. But every time we play against the Spurs, I'm learning somebody new, like Drew Eubanks. Like, this dude, like, came out of nowhere, and he was out there giving solid minutes for the team tonight. You know, I, I learned about uh, Poto from this team. Not tonight, but I'm saying in general, because I, I knew that he was from the Raptors, but he really didn't too, do too too much over there but once he came here pop unlocked them and that, that's why i always respect about popovich every time we play the spurs is this dude is just a whisper of players and he's got these guys playing really well but like like you guys both mentioned we were able to weather the storm tonight for you know and it's good to see that after how the spurs have been smacking us up since 99 every it feels like every time we play them whether it's the garden over there they always get have our number and tonight we we weather the storm and we won this game tonight i love seeing that Jay from said so Jay from East New York. Jay, what's good, man? You're on the show, man. How you feeling about tonight, bro? Yeah, I mean, this was just a good win, man. Another another good game. RJ showed up, man, because right. you know, he really he had me upset the last game against the Lakers, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just looking forward to the playoffs, man. We getting more healthy bodies back, you know what I'm saying? Right. And the Knicks is in the playoffs, baby. Drop a P in the chat for the Knicks being in the playoffs, man. That's all I got to say, man. Mm-hmm. NYK in the playoffs, man. Yes, How sir. about you, boy? Mm-hmm. 
You're... Yes, sir. I love it. Nice, sweet, to the point. Good call. Good call. Appreciate you, Jay, from East New York. I'm saying, I'm saying. <laughs> you, Someone you, said, you, you, let's you. hear from another simp. We need a battle. Yeah, hey, well, it, this ain't him. So what's there going is on? There it is, CP. What's good, bro? That's good what's happening? So, salute. <laughs> good. Salute, salute. Man. Nah, I was on the Iron Horse, man. It was, it was a little bit loud. Ah, there, so. got you, got you. Got uh, you. That's why I didn't want to uh, jump off mute, man. But um, great win. You know, 102.98. Uh, great come from behind win. Because I thought it was about to be a wrap in that third quarter, honestly. Because uh, I really didn't start off well. Then Tibbs picking up that, that technical foul really, you know, didn't set a good tone for the quarter. Mm. Give credit to DeRozan. He, he was flaming Bullock all night. You know, Jonte Murray had some moments. Um, nice guard, man. I, li- I like that kid a lot, bro. I like DeJounte Murray's yeah. game a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had a lot of trouble handling him in the pick and roll. And so things got interesting, man. But give credit to RJ. You know, Burks had it going in the first half. But give credit to RJ in particular, man, because he was kind of cold in that first half. Um, Knicks really didn't have it going. Bullock didn't have it going once again. But RJ really locked in in that second half, man. Ended up with 24 points, nine rebounds, five and nine from, from downtown. I thought RJ had an excellent second half. And then Burks, man. I told this bonehead Max Kellerman how important Burks was to this team. (laughs) And his first day back uh, gets in as a backup point. Bye-bye, Peyton. His minutes are going away. And Burks gives you 30 and 10 first night back. 5 of 10 from downtown. You needed it. You know, without that, we would have lost this game easily. So, um, you know, great to to maintain the pace. but, But with the Hawks and the Heat both winning out, you know, that was kind of hard. So we just got to keep doing it. You know, just keep handling yeah. our business, taking care of what we can at home. Get guys healthy. You know, Tibbs, Tibbs did say that Rose was available at the shoot around. So he was shooting around. He was participating. But they just uh, they just <clears throat> figured to, to rest him. So yeah. we'll figure out how they balance that going forward. I think they'll give it a go Saturday. Maybe you see him Saturday. I was going to ask, what's your thoughts on that, though, CP? Because we were saying, you know, rest them for the weekend and then just run into the playoffs with them playing. you think that yeah. we should let him play or that he should be playing this weekend or maybe one of the games? Like, what's your thoughts on uh, Derek Maybe Rose, he man? suits up, but they should go for it Saturday by by all means. You got to go okay. for it until, until you know, you're, you're eliminated from that fourth seed. I mean, getting home court in, the, in that first round is important. Okay. So if he's healthy enough, I would have him go. You know, just to make sure that that we maintain that pace because you want to get that you want to get that extra home game. You, you definitely want to get that extra home game in the playoffs. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens, man. I think the Bucks will play it. I don't think the Bucks will lay down for the Heat. You know, the Bucks are still trying to catch second. So. They're just still trying to catch the Nets in second. So um, I think the Bucks will have something to play for. I don't I don't see them you know resting the freak or anything like that. So let's see what happens. Yeah, let's see what happens with that one. I, I hope you're right. Trust me, I hope you're right because it would be nice to see that he get that loss from the Bucks. But I don't know something. I don't know something is telling me that they don't want that early exit again because Miami yeah. just had their number. Same way we talk about them with us. I, I don't know. I feel like Miami has their number the same way uh, in the playoffs again. But we'll see. I hope you're right. I definitely hope you're right on that one. Yeah. So it took it too, man. Um, other than that, you know, the vibes at MSG was electric once again. Obviously, when we came back, we won. Um, you know, outside the atmosphere was was charged up. Everybody was was in a, a great mood. Um, so it was good, man. It's just good to be out there vibing with the people. Yeah. Two more games to go at MSG. I might be back Saturday and Sunday. We'll see. To okay. TBD at the moment, but uh, we we definitely got some good footage for the channel. Good footage for the Knicks fan TV documentary coming out we next week. So be on the lookout for that. You, yeah, man. man. We, we got a big big lineup coming out next week, man. So. We uh, didn't get, we didn't sign any release forms to be in that. Are we not part of that? <laughs> I'm confused. We'll, we'll, we'll take we'll take care of that later. We'll take care of that later. <laughs> Behind the scenes, I, my team didn't get any. My team Listen. didn't get any paperwork. What about you, CK? Oh, if, we, we, let me check with my team. We, Yo, did you get anything? No, nah, I didn't get nothing. Yeah, man, we ain't getting nothing. What about you, team. Alex? Did you get any paperwork, Alex? <laughs> uh, I am my own attorney, and I did not get any paperwork. <laughs> I, guess, I, guess this is a, I guess this is a one-man show. <laughs> hey, listen, dude, we, we're in a rush to get this to the finish line before the playoffs come out. We'll, we'll get to the formalities afterwards and, and all of that, right, right, you know, right, right. all the situations and all of that. You know what I mean? For sure. For so, sure. Uh, yeah, no, nah, definitely suits everybody in the chat. 
Hit that thumbs up button for you, squad. Of course, definitely appreciate Alex for coming through, man. My, my Jamaican brethren. Yes, yeah, sir. I see Ash in there. Ash got the dark phoenix. Wow, 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 wow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <The> dark phoenix. <laughs> Ash got the dark phoenix look going on today. And, and uh, CK, definitely appreciate you, man. So always, man. I'll definitely catch up with everybody on Saturday. All right, bro. Yeah, man. Get some rest. And the chat was worried about you, man. They said they hope that you got a lot of sanitizer. And make sure you wipe everything off because you was getting mobbed oh, out yeah. there, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. The mosh pit, the mosh pit got a little lit, but you know. Uh, you, you gotta balance it out, man. But nah, definitely just being cautious and safe yeah. at the same time, and, and just having fun with the people. Shout out Papa Left, man. Papa Left yeah, was, he was out the there in the fray. Yeah, yeah. Papa Left was out there in the fray, man. So it was good to catch up with him. He he was in the mix with us. Knicks fan TV Dave was out there. Uh, my guy Angel, salute to Angel as well. Chris Shamus as well, and and Anthony Anthony MSG was out there as well. So uh, uh, good somebody said had, CP about to look like Joe Budden after this Knicks fan TV. Nah, man. Nah, no, no. That makes us no. Rory and Maul. Oh, nah, CK, man. Nah, 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 man. Ain't, ain't no Rory and Maul situation going uh, on. He's about to be. TV. He's about to be on the next stream talking to empty boxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nah, there's there's no Rory and Ball situation going on in Knicks fan TV, man. Right. I don't know what's going on with Joe Button and them, but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, know. good luck to them, man. I don't know what happened over there. <laughs> so, so I gotta talk to CP. Hey, you are in breach of your contract. And yeah. You are- <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what's going on with that, man. So, but good luck to them. Uh, yeah, good win. I'll catch yes. up with you guys Saturday, man. Hit that thumbs up button for your squad.